I'm in New Mexico. It's about 26 degrees with a light breeze. It is bitter cold. It's hard to even keep the coffee hot right now. But we have been having an awesome adventure with our friends Matt and Kara from Ozark Overland Adventures here in New Mexico for the last several days. It's been a true adventure. But what I wanted to do before we packed up and headed home was take a minute and walk around camp, talk about a few things, but more importantly, talk about Matt's Gladiator and how he has outfitted it. I have really enjoyed checking out all the gear he's got on there and watching that thing in action. And I thought you guys might like just taking a minute and getting a close up look at that. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull the camera off, walk around camp and we'll go talk to Matt. All right guys, we're gonna do this in a kind of a one take style. I think that'll work well. So this is our campsite for last night and this is probably not the nicest campsite we've had during this trip, but you know what, yesterday was a true adventure and we just had to find a place that was kind of sheltered and out of the wind and this worked for us. So you're gonna have to go watch the videos from our adventure to see some of the really cool places we camped. But let me just show you one thing that's really interesting. All these plants out here, see those thorns? Yeah, all these plants out here just wanna kill you. In fact, we just patched one of Matt's tires because one of those thorns st got stuck in there and uh, was leaking some air. All right. Before we talk about Matt's Chief, let's just talk quickly about the trailer and how it's held up. This trailer has been awesome. We got after it quite a bit on some trails out here. Even in the cold, which I was concerned about, it's been doing really well. Regina, Regina and I have been nice and toasty in there. It's been perfect. No problems at all. Very comfortable. It's nice having hot water. We do have a little heater in there. It's been perfect. Now, if you guys remember, I mounted these fuel cans up front here about about six weeks ago because the Jeep Wrangler 392 is a thirsty boy. And well, he was very thirsty on this trip. And if you've been out here to Southern New Mexico, it gets pretty remote. And I'm not gonna give anything away because it's part of the adventure, but let's just say that those fuel cans got used more than once. Uh, and I'm so thankful, so thankful that I had them because not only did I need them, but so did Matt. Buddy, has this not been a true adventure or what? It's been a blast. It has been a blast. We have been <laughs> having so much fun. a great time. We've seen some cool stuff and the weather has... It's it's February. It's been a little bipolar. It's, it's definitely. Uh, <laughs> Wish it had t-shirts in the day. Yeah. It's really cold at night. Yeah. I mean, we looked at the forecast before we got here, and things definitely didn't work out as we thought. Yeah. That, it, that, that's all right. These guys will see the video. Have a lot of fun. What I want to do, buddy, is I I love your gladiator. In Thanks. fact, I have a big affinity for gladiators, so I always enjoy seeing how people build them. I want to take a few minutes and just talk about it, uh, and from your perspective about not just the what, but the why you yep. got things, but First of all, why a Gladiator? I never had any intention of owning a Gladiator or a JL. Okay. Um, I had a JKU Rubicon and absolutely loved that Jeep. Yep. When the JLs came out, nah, too many electronics for I'd never have one. Mm -hmm. And then the JTs came out, didn't really care for their looks until they were like lifted and yep. 37 inch tires. And my wife and I were just goofing around on a Saturday and looking at <laughs> RVs and vans and stuff because in two and a half years we're hitting the road full time Yeah, and traveling and my wife just randomly said like what about like a gladiator with an mm. alu cap on the back yeah. Sorry, and so we I'm went still not sure about that. <laughs> <laughs> thanks Siri <laughs> um, yeah well, we're sure about it Siri thank you um, and so we went and test drove one yeah and we test drove a Mojave and a Rubicon okay and that was a uh, early Saturday afternoon. Yeah. What year was this? Uh, this was uh, May of 21. Okay. So, and this is a, a 2021 Gladiator Rubicon. Okay. And we, we test drove them and it just drove so good. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it drove so yeah, well. Yeah. And so that was a, a Saturday by Saturday afternoon. We were uh, getting my Wrangler evaluated for uh -huh. a trade in. And Sunday we were crunching the numbers, yeah. and Monday I picked yeah. it up. Well, there it happens. Well, so, it's, and it's the a, rest is history. It, I absolutely love this Jeep. Yeah, it's a beautiful blue it's, Gladiator. It's gorgeous. What uh, what engine did you get? I uh, got the three point six. Okay. I I, I love the Pentastar. Yep. It's a uh, you know, not, not a lot of people say I love the it, Pentastar. It's a. It's, <laughs> I mean. In the JKs, they had a reputation of about you know 120,000 miles rockers and stuff yeah. having issues. Yeah. But it's just, 
it works. Yeah. It's got enough power. It's got enough torque. Sure. Um, I, I prefer the gas over the diesel yep. just because, I mean, sometimes in remote areas, it's hard to find diesel. Well, we found that out yesterday. <laughs> yeah, we did. <laughs> we sure did. And, you know, and as you found out, it's yeah. hard to find premium. Correct. So, yep. you know, for, for where we like to go in just remote destinations, the 3.6 gas, yep. 86 octane fuel yep. or 87 octane right. fuel, it, it, it's cool. always there. Engine's bone stock. And just bump stock. Okay, you do have a snorkel though. I do have a snorkel. And, and yes. tell people why do you have a snorkel specifically? Uh, because the Ozark National Forest yeah. is my backyard. Yeah. And you are crossing and the water every you, half a mile. Yes, <laughs> and sometimes very deep water. Okay. So it's uh, you know, it's cheap insurance with, with the way this thing's outfitted. Yeah. If I'm ever to the point of really needing a, a snorkel, yeah. I've made a horrible mistake because that water's, you know, Right. Four feet, four and a half okay. feet deep. And wh who makes this one? This one's AEV. AEV, okay. Yeah. And you're pretty I, happy with it? I'm thrilled with it. Okay. Easy I, install other than cutting the hood, right? Cutting the hood. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Uh, talk about, dude, I like your decal up here. What, what is that? It's got some topo on there. Yeah. That's from a company called Sticky Vinyls. Okay. And this, they do custom graphics. It's texture. It is texture. I like that. Uh, but this is a uh, topographic map of one of my favorite spots in the Ozarks. Okay. My favorite campsite in all the Ozarks is right there. Sure, you want to give that away? <laughs> Well, I don't think I know what it is. <laughs> All right. Uh, you've done quite a bit of work to the front. Yep. So what have you got going on? What, uh, let's start with the bumper. Uh, Reliant Fabric, excuse me, Relentless Fabrication okay. is the bumper. I saw them at Expo West last year and absolutely fell in love with this bumper. It checked off all the boxes. It was stubby, recessed winch mount, okay. little bull bar here, steel? provisions for lights. It is steel. Okay. And it's as soon as I saw it at Expo West, I had to have it. Okay. What winch? Uh, open road right. Panther series to 13,000 pound winch with synthetic line. Okay. Uh, I love it because it has a remote uh, It has wireless remotes. Yeah, and just being able to not have to deal with the cords and stuff Is it fair it's, to say that's a reasonably priced winch? Uh, I would definitely call it budget. Yeah, I, like I mean it. for under yeah. I think between four and five hundred dollars sometimes yeah. even under four hundred dollars. Wow, and you get and synthetic I've, line. It's pretty good. Yeah, and I've had it for a year and a half now. Okay. And it has done really well. And what is the, what's your fair lead? What is that? Uh, this is a groove fair lead from Yankum Ropes. I don't think I've seen that before. It is, it takes away all the metal from your recovery system. Okay. So there's, you know, there's no big hook. There's no thimble or anything up here. You've got just your winch line. And you do have to cut the hook off the front. Okay. But then you. Oh, that makes it easy, huh? But then you just use a soft shackle and connect it to your tree strap or whatever. Yeah. And so there's no metal involved. So if you do have a breakage. Yeah. Now synthetic doesn't have a lot of kinetic energy. Okay. But sometimes you know there can be some. Yeah. So if there is a you know a, a failure or anything, okay. it's it's really safe. All right. Now you've got some forward facing and some side facing lights. Yep. Talk about those. Uh, this bumper is specifically designed with this cutout for the Baja Designs S1 flush mount. Okay. And so went with those. Right. No, uh, no other light fits this spot. Okay. <laughs> and then I had these Denali D4 cubes uh, from my JK. All right. And they're fantastic lights. So I've got those angled out at about a sure. 45 degree angle because yeah. sometimes we wheel at night. Yep. And finding the little offshoots of the trails in the Ozarks yep. can be a huge challenge. So I want to fill in the sides. Okay. And then factory okay. fogs. Nice. All right, before we move over to the side and talk about tires and suspension, uh, talk about steering and I mean, have you done anything to tie rod, drag link, any of that stuff? Right now, everything is stock. Okay. Uh, but I do have tie rod, drag link, sector shaft brace from Steer Smarts in my garage. Okay. They, they arrived while we were on the strip. Oh, yeah, you're going <laughs> to so, be happy with that. I've had, I've had Steer Smarts on my uh, JK for, I don't know, five or six years. It's really good stuff. So. Yeah, we're, we're heading to Moab next month to yeah. run Pritchett Canyon and yeah. a bunch of other hard trails and yeah. really wanted to beef up the suspension. Okay. Um, well, or beef, beef up the front end. Yeah, because you're running a little bit bigger tire. Yeah. These are not stock. These are not. These are 38 inch. Okay. Uh, Milestar Patagonia MT, the new O2 versions. Okay, so these ones, what's different between the O1s and the O2s? The O2s, they tweak the compound. Okay. And the O1s, the, they had a reputation for being really good off road, yep. but wearing very unevenly. Yep. and very quickly on road. Yep, I can attest to that. Yes, um, so the O2, they went back and tweaked the compound. Now they still perform very well off road, but we get a lot more life and even tread wear sure. on pavements. So and this you're, put, is my, you're, put, you're putting on some miles on this Jeep. Yeah, I've, it's, I mean, I've had it for a year and a half and it's got 
I will turn 50,000 miles as I'm heading home. Yeah, so you're definitely laying down yeah. some miles. You gotta have a good tire for that. Yeah. And this is my, I just put these on before we came here. So this is my second set of the MTO2s. Okay. And my first set, I got 27,000 miles. Okay. And they still had 50% tread life left. Now look, there's a lot of mud in the Ozarks. Yeah. And some people have commented in saying that the Patagonians don't do so great in the mud. What's been your experience? Uh, I, I mean, I've never been stuck in the mud. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's good. <laughs> so I, they perform great. Okay. I, I have no complaints about them really in any condition. Okay, right so. on. What uh, what wheels are you running? Uh, they're the Vision Manx. Okay. Uh, they were just, I mean, there's just a standard wheel, and I like the way they look. As you can see, I have chewed well, these I mean, up yeah. pretty heavily on the rocks. You kind of use it a little bit. Yeah. And what about... I think this is actually my good wheel. Okay. <laughs> what, and what about behind it? You've got, uh, you got some pretty beefy shocks back there. Uh, suspension. I've got Clayton Off-Road 3.5 inch Overland Plus okay. kit. Um, and what does that what does that get you? That gets you everything. It gets control you arms, control arms, track bar, front and rear, um, shocks. Okay. Not shocks. Um, and springs that are designed to handle the added weight. Okay. I started with a rock crawler lift, and fantastic. Yep. Until I started putting all the weight in the back, yeah. and then the back end really started to to droop. Okay. So went with the Clayton and. Fully loaded, this thing has zero sag in it. Okay, what uh, what shocks and remote, you got a remote reservoir The here. shocks are from Elka. Okay. Ooh, sorry guys, it's tough to see. Okay, yeah. there we go. The shocks are from Elka, okay. uh, which are a huge name in the, the power sports, ATV, UTV okay. uh, world. And so they are just starting to get into the Jeep world. Okay. And they are fully adjustable remote reservoir shocks. All right. Two and a half inch in the front, big giant three and a half inch shocks in the rear. Oh, wow, okay. And I love them because you can dial in both the soft and the hard compression. Okay. So, oh, sorry guys, I am, and we're we're doing this one take, <laughs> and the joystick is giving me a hard time uh, here. So I can dial in the the soft rebound, yep. and so you know the body roll, the whoops and stuff, and then I can dial in the hard impacts for like you know, rutted roads and hard rocks and that sort of thing. Okay. And the ride is incredible. Yeah. And then and then your Rubicon decal and this. Well, yeah, they all all. We replaced all these from sticky bottles. And it still has the same kind of matching same texture. Type of. I don't know. I kind of like that. It's pretty slick. And you got a muddy, muddy sully, muddy sully down here. Sorry, guys. The shadows are. It is what it is. We're out here in the desert. Yep. It's cold. Jeep's oh. name is Sully. Jeep's name is Sully. Yep. And all right. My wife's Wrangler's name is Boo. So <laughs> they go together. Okay. You've got uh, KC Pro Six light bar. Yep. And is this and this is their mount? Correct? This is their mount. Okay. Let's get around on that. And then I like. I really like where you have. Mounted your uh, GMRS antenna up there. Yeah, it works well. That's a that's a nice little spot. Is where did you get the mount for that? Uh, honestly, I don't remember. <laughs> really? Because I kind of like that. I want to yeah, know. I don't remember where that came from. Okay. Um, I think it was a. I, I, I don't remember. I, I really don't. All right. I don't know if well, I got it from Amazon. We're gonna or if it... we're gonna figure it out and try to put a link down below. Yeah. <laughs> and if the link's not down there, well then we we blew it. Yeah. Funny thing about that light bar. This is the third Jeep of ours uh -huh. that it's lived on. Oh yeah. So my wife bought it for her Wrangler a long time ago. Sure. Then she sold that. And so it went to my JK and then it wasn't being traded yeah. in for sure. And they, so they and then it took it off and it's now living on the Gladiator. Yeah. Uh, the one on my JK is six years old. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's the best looking light. Oh, I agree. I mean, hands down for a Jeep, it's the best looking light. Oh yeah, absolutely. Ta so we talked about your radio. So w inside, you're running a Midland GMRS. Yep, MXD575. Yeah, so, uh, and then that's the little, that's that's the little, the little ghost, ghost antenna. antenna, guys, just uh, just for that. But let's talk about what else is on the roof. That's that's not something you drive around with. No, not mounted. That's our that's our Starlink. Yeah. We got that, uh, I don't know, six, seven months ago. Yeah, how are you liking it? I love it. Yeah. You know, I mean, people give you a hard time about, you know, going out and remote destinations to be away from mm -hmm. being connected and stuff. Yeah. But as often as we travel yeah. and, you know, considering our line of work, yeah. um, it, it, we need to be connected. I want to be able to touch base with my kids back home and, you know. Yeah, you know, I think I think the difference is like, if you're going out for a weekend or even two nights, you know, a long weekend, yeah, leave it. you don't need something like that. But mm -hmm. when you're going out for one, two, three weeks, Absolutely. Having an ability to, to connect and just take care of a couple things, let everybody know you're all right. You know, that's a nice, uh, yeah. it's a nice asset. Yeah, for what we do, you yeah. know, we're uploading content from right. camp and stuff. And right. So, for sure. Um, it's, uh, it, it, it works incredibly well. Yeah. Especially when you're out here in the desert. Right. Now, in the Ozarks, it's kind of hit or miss. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't try to upload a video from the Ozarks, but I can 
text care. I can text my kids yeah. and message them and stuff. So it's yeah. uh, it's worth it. Okay. Before we talk about the rock sliders, I, I want to make sure we talk about axles. So you have stock axles? I have the stock axles. Okay. Uh, gear ratio? Five, uh, 513th. 513th. Yep. They are okay. re-geared with 513s uh, from Yukon. And I, I mean, if you're if you're gonna go larger tires, yeah, you gotta regear. I agree. Because okay. uh, with a, I started with 37s, never saw eighth gear. Yeah. Sometimes didn't see seventh gear, and so going to 38s, I, you just have to regear. Okay. Can we pull the the door? And let's yeah. just look in the interior yep. real quick. Uh, all my camera bags and stuff in the front seat. Yeah, that's all right. All our jeeps are a filthy mess right yes. now. Yes. Talk about the bar. Uh, that's from a company called Anvil Overland. Okay. And they make every accessory that's on here. Okay. Uh, the handheld radio mount. Yep. I've actually got a Garmin inReach mount sitting at home. Okay. Uh, the GoPro mounts, yeah. my phone mount, tablet mount, another phone mount on the other side for a passenger. And I love this thing. What is that little speaker in the, in the center? Uh, that's just a little uh, radio speaker from oh, my Midland. That's nice because mine's down on my floor. Having it up there is pretty slick. Yeah, it's just a, I, I think it was like a $15 speaker from Amazon. Okay. All right. And uh, all my lights are controlled by the um, aux beam switch panel up top. Yep. Sorry, guys. I know it's tough to see, but it's up there. I promise. And then, of course, he's got all this. And hothead headliners, yep. which legit make a difference in both sound oh, and temperature. Huge difference. And you can put patches on them, which is huge really difference. I mean, that's really the main reason yep. we have them. And right? you have, yeah, and you've got some custom uh, seats. Uh, no, these are factory. These came factory. Yep. These, wow. are, these are factory, they're the special cat skin Where have I seats. been? I haven't seen these on a stock I hadn't seen them you? before either until I bought this one. Mm -hmm. And one, one thing that you can't see in here is the sound system. Okay. Factory, factory head unit, yep. but we've got the MB Quart Gladiator speaker package. Okay. So what it places all six speakers all right. and two 10 inch subs under the oh. rear seat. It now I got amazing. I haven't heard you thumping down the trail. <laughs> well, I don't. Use it, out on me. I don't play music when I'm on the trail because I like to hear the nature. I like to hear okay. the birds. I like to hear the tires. All right, all right. So Fair yeah, enough. but the MB Court system sounds amazing. Okay, uh, let's talk about your rock sliders because I was noticing this morning that you still have the stock yep. slider on there. Yep, back in the addition to it. So what have you done there? Um, these are the Ace Engineering rock sliders, okay. and they are designed to work in conjunction with the factory Rubicon rails. Okay. So it, it kind of gives you double protection. Yeah. If I ever, you know, just really lean on something hard, and you can see these things yeah. have been used and abused. Yeah. Um, but if I, I mean, ever, you can do that at the mall too. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I like, just like the idea of having double protection. This is protecting the pinch seam, and this protects everything else. It sticks out far enough that I can pivot off trees, pivot sure. around rocks. Uh, makes for a great step yep. for and, and accessing we're the still, roof. We're, we're still. still. Everything's still. Right. Everything's, everything's still except for the skid plates. Nice. I like it. All right. Now we're going to get to what I think is the Overland goodies. Let's just uh, let's just talk about your rack for a second. What do we got? Oh man, this is my favorite thing. I started out with a, just a standard rack. Yep and quickly became frustrated that if I needed to access things up here, mm -hmm. I was having to, to sometimes literally crawl in the back of the bed yeah. to access a tote or access, you know, a, yep. a chair or something. So this is from Extrusion Overland. Okay. And it's all extruded aluminum. Okay. And they, I mean, we just kind of been brainstorming ideas, but the things you can do with this, yeah. my favorite thing, Oh, look at that. Oh man, that's Pneumatic nice. Pneumatic panel. So I've got a panel here yeah. and panel on the other side, wow. which allows me to, you know, quickly access sure, sure. gear back here. Yep. Um, I took some leftover extrusion that I had uh -huh. and built this shelf. Okay. So now I've got these front runner wolf packs here. This one contains extra blankets and extra recovery gear, toe strap, that sort of thing. Okay. My one on the other side has all of my tools. Okay. And so this just makes yeah. accessing gear in this yeah. section and it's so it, much easier and it's the little things like this like a little handle that yeah. makes like when you got to crawl up to get up on the roof or whatever really easy w what's that uh extra antenna you got there? that's not gmrs uh no this is a cell signal booster okay um that i don't use anymore since oh, i okay. have <laughs> got it <laughs> since i have starlink now um i, I ha i've just never had much luck with cell signal boosters really i mean they work sometimes mm -hmm. but out here where there's no signal yeah you're not gonna get anything okay so All right. uh, i'm probably going to take that off eventually okay you got a couple lights you got some side lights and some rear ambers yep side lights here they're actually the same light okay. um from ox beam okay. uh, white in the 
on the side. Amber here in the back for okay. chase lights. All right. And then you got a uh, fuel can, which fuel got, can, got which used. I had to use yesterday, <laughs> and a water can. And then because we have a diesel heater, I put my uh, diesel. Oh, can diesel roller packs there. Okay. Yeah. And then you got a little faucet here. A little spout, your, so I yeah. can flip this over and, and have yeah. quick water. I like it. Just... And then again, more of the uh, textured decal yep. thing. It really gives it really gives your Jeep a nice style. Thanks. Like I love it. Uh, those rear tail lights are not stock. Talk about those for a second. No, the very first thing I did, my first outing at the local off-road park in Arkansas, uh -huh. was popped off my passenger rear tail light oh. on a tree, oh. uh, pitched over, and you know the yeah. I, the tail lights on the Gladiators are probably the worst design flaw ever. They stick out. They stick out quite. Because <laughs> they stick out to yeah. here, and they are a tree magnet. Uh, and they are expensive to yeah. replace. So uh, went with the Oracle flush mounts. Mm. Okay. And haven't uh, haven't hit, knocked those off yet. All right. Well, that's good. You still get your uh, um, what is the sensor? The yep. Still has a parking sensor. Parking sensor right yep. there. Right. And these rear lights are stupid bright. Pretty good, huh? Yeah. Okay. Uh, before we go inside the truck, what's the what rear bumper do you have? Uh, the rear bumper is from JCW. Okay. Uh, it was a company. They reached out to me shortly after I got after I got the Gladiator. I ran the front bumper for a while. Okay. And uh, it it's very nice. Yeah. It's got uh, provisions for extra lights and yeah. recovery points, and still has the the rear sensor mounts. Okay, um, it serves me well. Right. Still got the factory sliders there. Oh, the rear. Yeah. yep. So that works. Yep. That's nice. It works in conjunction with the factory rear corner guards. Okay. Uh, talk to me about your trash bag. The trash bag is I've, is, I've is new. That out. Yeah. yeah, the trash bag's new. So I, you know, on the Wranglers or anyone any vehicle with a um, spare tire on the back yep. you know we're familiar with trash roos and stuff yeah but i had not found something that worked with the tailgate of uh, of the gladiator yeah and so this company and atelier they're french canadian yep. expedition adventure i'm probably butchering that um anyway they make a trash bag yeah. that disconnects and so as you lower the tailgate yeah it swings down yeah nice and it's like a it's like a good vinyl it's not the it canvas is. that's gonna deteriorate and this is my first long trip with this yeah and it's been great okay and then you've got a um a tailgate table, tailgate table from all pro off-road okay and this just converts your tailgate into your kitchen cooking space yeah so it's basically cutting board material okay. and i love it i love it all right so I, i've designed the back to be to be my kitchen yeah well, let's talk about that. What uh, what drawer setup do you have here? Drawer setup is from SHW Off-Road. One of the things I, I realized as soon as I got the Gladiator is there's two things that nobody makes that would be incredibly helpful. Uh, first was uh, a half or three quarter height enclosed cap, okay. like an RSI smart cap, yep. but not full height because okay. I didn't want my tent that high. Mm -hmm. But I like I did like the idea of having an enclosed bed, yep. but nobody makes that. Yep. And nobody made a finished half width drawer slide okay it was you know like a decked it's right full width other companies make full width yeah and i didn't want my fridge way up here um and then just earlier um, i guess toward the end of 2022 shw came out with their finished half drawer slide okay. and all my stuff and it comes all the way out there we go all the goodies all the goodies all the goodies so got extra kitchen stuff um extra camp gear yeah. back here lights and stuff my chair fits in here my act my little hatchets and axes and jet foil and all the things okay what's well, uh what about your fridge slider that's uh that thing's pretty beefy the fridge slide it's this is like, a, a whole kitchen slide yeah look at that so that comes out then oh. that comes out it's got a windscreen to if you put your oh it's got a built-in windscreen into the table yeah oh, i there like you that pull this out and nice very cool yeah. okay gotcha and who makes this uh global road outdoors the same company that makes my tent okay right on. and then what uh what, what size fridge do you have here 70. oh wait 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 we got to point out the important thing oh there you go guys <laughs> that's the important thing right there uh marco's being represented but so is Trojica. so the fridge is the ice co vl75 pro okay Dual zone. Dual zone. Okay. Um, this thing, I get asked all the time, how well has this fridge held up in the back of my Gladiator? Yeah. Because it lives here full time. Okay. So it gets rained on. It, you know, sure. endures all the elements. You can see it's very dirty. It is very dusty. 
but I mean, this thing's been living out here, back here for a year and a half. Can we see the inside? Yeah. Let's okay. see what food I have in here. And what size? Is it? What size is it? Seventy-five liters. Seventy-five. Mm -hmm. Okay. So either side can be a fridge or a freezer, so you can have. Yep. Ice cream if you want. Absolutely. Which we don't need right now. And what I love about the IceCo Pro Series is. Oh. They open both ways. Wow. You don't have to move the door to make. You don't it. have to move the door, and you can take it completely. Come off. on. <laughs> That's pretty clever. I like that. A lot, it's a. Uh, it's a great feature. Okay. So this thing, I mean, this thing has not failed. It's been running 24 seven since I put it in here. Okay, leave, leave that there. Cause I think what we need to do, it's going to be hard to show oh, yeah. these guys, but let's just talk about, um, I'm going to let you just point. It's going to be hard for them to see. So what do you got for power? Okay. For power, I've got two 100 amp hour, uh, anti-gravity lithium ion phosphate batteries. Okay. And they're in, they're, they're just in, in little battery boxes, battery like boxes back Amazon. there. Okay. Uh, and this are, is, you did this yourself. Yep. This is all DIY. Yep. Um, they are charged by, you can see them just behind the battery boxes yeah, back they're, there. They're not going to be able to see them. Y'all just have to trust us that they're yeah. there, guys. Uh, it's a Red Arc uh, BCDC 1250. Okay. So that thing pumps out up to 50 amps. Okay. So 200 amp hours, if I ever drained these batteries, you know, within four or five hours yeah. of just driving, yeah. I could have them recharged. Yeah. Um, next to them is what's currently powering Starlink, uh, a Renogy 2000 watt inverter. Okay that uh lives right there it's mounted to the side of the drawer i'm gonna i'm gonna zoom in here for a second guys i apologize we're gonna see if we can get you to see it I'm gonna see it's under my baboon shade yeah you can actually kind of see it you it's, can see it from this side really good all right let's come over there oh yeah okay. oh well you guys will just have to trust us you did a really good job with uh with making that all fit and looking good thanks yeah um, that was just with the but the way I had the fridge slide and everything, that was kind of empty space. Yep. And it stores my, my okay. power and the batteries. Okay. And, and now my air compressor. And, and talk about the air compressor. What's that green guy back uh, there? The air compressor is from Morflate. Okay. If they're 10.6. It is a twin air compressor, very much like the ARB twin. Uh huh. Um, but it's a lot more budget friendly. Okay. So the ARB twin is what, 600 bucks yeah. or so? Yep. That one's 250. Yeah. Pretty nice. And my wife has the ARB twin. And the, they're cracking just like you do. Uh -huh. And so I've got that and they will go toe to toe. Yeah. As far as inflating yeah. the tires. Oh, yeah. You haven't had, you, <laughs> we haven't been waiting on each other. That's for huh. sure. This ship. You got uh, a little water jerry can. Yep. Five gallon scepter jerry can. Okay. Um, that's uh, it's got a little pump in there. Yep. And so I can flip a switch and have pressurized water. Okay. Got and then propane, five pound propane tank. And you're using what mount? Uh, power tank mount. Power tank mount. You pretty happy with, uh, with how that holds up? Yeah. Good. I, I hated just dealing with all the green propane bottles. Yeah. I, I just got so sick of that. And so I just carry the five pound bottle and it is, it's awesome. Yeah. And I've got, uh, I've actually got rock lights. Okay. Under here. What do you got? Serve as my bed light. What lights are you using? Uh, MC tuning, I think. Okay. I think they're from MC tuning. That's so a good spot my, for lights. Those like are my that. rock lights to yeah. illuminate the bed. Okay. Um, and I've got little, these are just cheap little lights I got from Amazon that okay. illuminate my table out yeah. here for when I'm cooking. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the tent. What do you got? The tent is from Global Road Outdoors. Yep. It's their Sidekick One. So it's the same same size, same profile as like a iCamp or SkyCamp Mini. Okay. It's a full size bed in there. And how do you, how do you like the mattress? Because for me, a rooftop tent, that's the most important thing. Uh, I, I have yet to find a stock mattress that is comfortable, I, I especially agree. in a hard shell. It's Soft tough. shells can get a thicker mattress, but yeah. listen, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go on a soapbox here, guys. Rooftop tent manufacturers. The most important thing about a rooftop tent is the mattress. You guys, <laughs> you guys need to give more attention to the mattress. Agreed. There, there we I, go. Okay, stepping think, off my soapbox. So I have, I, I do not have the stock mattress in there. Yeah. I have replaced it with a. It's a four and a half inch inflatable and memory from combo kind of like it's very much like an x-bed yep. mattress which okay. is the name bread most people know yep. uh, but it's four and a half inches and it is more comfortable than my bed at home nice. i absolutely love that thing i would show it to you but care still in the tent because <laughs> it's cold we can it's blame cold. her we can blame <laughs> she's her she's being yeah. protected uh, but I, I absolutely love this tent yeah uh care's got the eye camper on her okay. on her wrangler yeah and we've done you know a side-by-side -side comparison mm -hmm. yeah and they, they all have the pros and cons but i absolutely love this okay tent. speaking of being cold and staying warm in the tent. How do you go about doing that? Diesel heater. What do you got? Uh, this is is one we we got not too long ago. It's from a I, I just bought it off Amazon. Yeah. It was like 150 bucks. Okay. Um, company's called Silvel. It's all in one. It's an all in one unit. 
So you got the, and you it's, just a, have to it's a five it kilowatt. Okay. And yeah, I just I plug it into my auxiliary outlet that I put in the bed. Okay. And man, we have been warm and cozy this whole time. Yeah. Uh, you've been much warmer and cozier than us uh, because <laughs> right. I think that a diesel heater might be something that might be in our future. I like that it's all in one. You just plug it in, turn it on. You need to run a hose all the way up there. Uh, I think the one thing you were talking about was this morning. You think your hose was probably a little too long. Yeah, I'm gonna shorten my hose. Yeah, because I, I I think I lost some heat overnight because it got down to almost 20 degrees last night. Yeah, it was uh, it was bitter cold. Yeah, so I, I think I definitely lost some heat. Okay. Just because of how long the hose was, so I'm gonna shortened up. One gallon tank inside. I think so. And and how long how long does that last? Uh, we had this on high. Yeah. All night. Yeah. And I've still got half tank left. Yeah, that's awesome. Which so. is crazy. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, what do you have on the side uh, this side of your rack? This side. Uh, this. Let's see. This, this also flips up, but I can't with the temp. But this okay. are just little short recovery boards. Yep. And I use those for leveling the Jeep okay. at camp. Right. Um, I don't know that I would actually use those in a recovery situation. Yeah. Maybe maybe in, yeah. in snow, but um, they work great for leveling. There you go. And this is a, it's a box from Harbor Freight, very much like a Plano box. Okay. But this is where all my recovery gear, oh. my main recovery gear lives. Easy to access. So soft shackles, uh, my air up hose, tree strap, another soft shackle fire repair kit, fire starter. I like um, the little bag. It came with a little bag on here. Nope. Did you add that? This is added from Amazon. I like that. And this little organizer from Amazon too. Okay. A couple, uh, um, what are these called? <laughs> snatch blocks. Snatch blocks. Uh, synthetic snatch blocks. Yep. Which uh, have worked really well. Okay. Uh, I've got this one from trailrecon.com. Right. When we were at uh, one of the expos. There you go. Um, and so this is where my most important stuff lives. I'm a big, uh, big proponent of make sure your recovery gear yep. is as easy to get to as possible. Absolutely. So and, that's, and, that's why it lives here. And your safety gear. And my safety gear, exactly. Okay. All right, Matt. Uh, I, dude, I love your truck. Thanks. Uh, two quick questions for you. One, what's next? What's the next upgrade? I know you talked about steering, but what what after that? Um, I think I'm going to redesign the rack some okay. and maybe try a different tent. Okay. Um, just because, uh, just because I, I want to. Okay. Um, so I'm currently working with extrusion, um, on doing a full height rack. All right. And they're right now they're currently working these little, the little side panels, making some taller ones for me. Okay. Cause I don't, I don't want the gaps yep. if I went with the tall rack. Yep. And then I'm thinking of switching out this style tent to the more flat wedge style. Got it. Um, and just and, and see how that works out. Okay. Global Road makes that flat style wedge tent. Yeah. Um, it's called the Aegis, and I, I want to give that a try. Okay. Uh, just to just to try something different. All right. I like it. I can't wait to see those. Uh, your favorite thing about this entire truck build? Oh gosh. Um, man, you put me on the spot there. Oh yeah. There's so much. <laughs> the one I mean, thing you just have to have. Oh, the one thing I just, I, I mean, I, I love the back end. Okay. Um, cause when I, when we decided we were going to go with the gladiator, yeah. you know, with the Wrangler that went through multiple iterations, Sure. but when I bought the gladiator after having the experiences that I had, I knew exactly what I wanted to do with it. I knew exactly how I wanted to build it, yeah. you know, for more long-term overlanding and the way I've got the back end dialed in for, you know, for fridge and gear and stuff like that. Yep. Super easy to get to. Uh, this is my favorite spot. Okay. Last question. What do you think about Southern New Mexico? I love it. It's beautiful. It is, it, it's really caught me off guard Yeah. with the variety. I expected us to, you know, be doing a lot of, uh, you know, graded oh, you know, forest oh, no. service roads. We, we got after Well, we bit. got, there was some nice technical oh, stuff yeah, yeah. and um, we've seen some amazing things. Yeah. We, uh, I, I, and I, I'm very surprised about how remote we got. Oh yeah, a little more remote than I think we more expected. Remote than that, yeah. More remote than we expected. That's for sure. Um, so. If you're going to come out here, oh. bring fuel. Oh yeah, bring it, fuel. You know, unless you're just making day trips into the forest, right. Right. Uh, then you're fine. But yeah. if you're planning on yep. spending two, three days, yep. bring bring fuel. Well, awesome, dude. Well, it's been awesome uh, being out here with you. I'm going to go check in on Regina. All right, because she's making breakfast. She is so making breakfast. She is making breakfast this morning. So real quick, guys. Good morning, hon. Good morning. How are you? Cold. Yes, it's cold. <laughs> Actually, it's not so bad in the yeah. sunshine. But uh, you slept well and warm last night? I did. Okay. Huddled up under our bedding. Yeah. What are your thoughts on New Mexico? 
It's beautiful. Okay. It's incredibly diverse. Yeah. I mean, we've seen so many. I mean, we've seen elk. We've seen an owl swoop down by us. Yes, yeah, javelina. Javelina, those little piggy things. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. A deer. Yeah. Yeah. What are you making for breakfast on I this am, very cold morning? First time I'm making it, but I'm attempting to make a crustless quiche. Whoa, so I just started cooking it. Okay. So it's um, eggs with some milk and some cream and some seasonings okay. and some Gruyere cheese and uh, diced ham. Well, I am ready to eat breakfast, pack up, and get warm. Yeah, warm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you guys enjoyed checking out Matt's Jeep. He's done a great job with that build, and I know he's got lots of future adventures planned with that. So make sure you go over to Ozark Overland Adventures on YouTube, and you can follow along as they're out getting after it. Now, I can barely feel my ears, so we're going to pack up and head home and uh, go back to Southern California where it's a little warmer. Thanks for visiting us, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you check us out over at trailrecon.com. Thanks for watching.